Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to the full review of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So the first thing we will do, I um, apologize if there's dust. I actually have a light, as you can see, shining on everything. So if it gets in the way of the reflection, I apologize. I'm going to do my best to check and make sure it doesn't happen. But I really wanted you guys to get uh, a good look at the phone. And the best way to do that is to have proper lighting. So, yeah. so um, as you can see, uh, we have the S Pen holder. We have uh, two antenna bands. We have a microphone USB-C or uh, USB-3, whatever you want to call it. I believe it's USB-C. We have a uh, speaker grill, the microphone, like I said, the SIM tray. Um, and then, yeah, so that's that side. And then we have, let's see, right here. Yeah, so we have an antenna band um, as we go across. That's it. Um, I do like the finish. Um, it does look very, like, sparkly, I guess you'd say. Um, yeah, it does shine. For instance, right here. Sorry, I'm trying to get the angle. Yeah, there we go. So it is, uh, it does like kind of glitter. Um, it shines in the light. It looks very, very clean. Um, I like that a lot. So let's go to the top of the phone. Sorry about that, guys. I'm trying my best to um, get this camera to focus well. There we go. Um, yeah, so we have two, uh, I believe that's maybe an IR blaster or my, more microphones or some kinds of sensors. I don't know exactly what kind of sensor that is. Apologies. We have an antenna band here. Um, and then on the right side of the phone, it looks like they put the the rockers over here. So we have a antenna band, volume rocker. Um, they do feel... They feel like metal, and they don't move around. Like, when they, like, eh, they kind of do. Oh, is this plastic? No, it's metal. Um, which actually looks good. Um, yeah, so it's it's in place. It doesn't, you don't really catch it moving forward or anything. They did a good job of solidifying the button and making it feel very premium and stuck in place. That's something that, um, for instance, on the Red Magic, they don't really have that sturdy of buttons. They are more sturdy, but they do move around, and they do, they aren't as, like, in place uh, feeling as they are on this phone. Um, so yeah, so if you really want a solid feeling phone, no knock on the Red Magic phone as I have a million uh, videos on Red Magic phones, I really enjoy it. And that's this is actually my wife's phone, so um, I don't think I dislike that phone because I very much, very much like that phone. Um, so yeah. Awesome, yeah, so that's that side, uh, actually right here. Um, so I believe because 5G, um, uh, they don't want, I guess, the signal to be disrupted. Sorry, let me get my thumb out of here. That might help with the focus. For some reason, when I do this, it focuses, so... Good lord, man. I'm so sorry, guys. This is fucking annoying. Yeah, so anyway, um, <laughs> let's, see, let's see if it looks better here. Yeah, so... Basically, um, since my camera doesn't want to focus and it actually hates me, um, which is a good thing to know. You know, good thing to know that my camera actually hates me, so. Yes, bitch, let's fucking go. Okay, we got it. Finally. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, sorry about that. But for 5G, um, they don't want it, I guess, like, the signal gets affected somehow when it goes through um, different uh, metals. Speaking of metal, this phone has uh, metal sick, by the way, dude. Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh, speaking of metals, it is titanium. I don't know the exact percentage of titanium. I know it's probably mixed with something else, but it is titanium, so that's cool. And they're kind of following the Apple titanium thing. I don't know. It does look cool. So this is uh, brushed uh, brushed violet, I believe. <clears throat> so it looks purple. I think that they did a good job with the two-tone, and then they also did a good job with making silver around the cameras. They do a very good job of making a very, like, just good-looking phone, dude. This thing looks, um, it looks good, man. It looks really, really good. Like, it's just premium as hell. So, let's let's see right here. So, we can see the camera lenses, right? So, they do protrude. They do pop up. Um, if you don't want this and you want a phone that's just a powerhouse, go with the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. 
This is obviously just a phone for people who just want a really good phone. They don't really care about gaming that much, but they want to be able to run games and stuff like that. So if you don't really care and it's not a big deal and you just want a phone that's solid or like you really care about cameras, for instance, this phone is a beast, man. The cameras on this thing are awesome. I believe there's a 200 megapixel one, a 50 megapixel one, and a 12 megapixel sensor. Uh, megapixels aren't everything, but they do help with quality. I don't know the names of the lenses, but they are uh, solid phone lenses, so don't worry about that. Samsung always makes great camera lenses. They do it for the majority of phones anyway. So yeah, so we have that. Then we have another camera over here. I don't know that one. Um, it might be the wide angle lens or one of something like that. I don't know. It could be a combo lens, something like that. I'm not too um, tech savvy when it comes to cameras. And I apologize about the dust. Um, you know, please forgive me about that. Um, but yeah, so either way, uh, these do look really good. And I, that might be a sensor or something. Um, but yeah, then there's a one LED flash, but I believe it gets pretty bright. So no worries there if it's just one. Um, yeah, so the next one, the next thing we will do is just take a look from the front of the phone. Um, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, there we go. So my wife did a put a did put a screen protector on, which means it's kind of smudgy and stuff like that. So um, apologies there. Yeah. So clearly we got this, and then we will boop the display on. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. This is the T-Mobile edition. This is a 256 gig version. It was thirteen hundred dollars, and for my Red Magic Nine Pro Plus, which was way less. Um, uh, I think Samsung definitely, <laughs> excuse me, jacks the prices <laughs> much higher than they need to be. Um, but you can get deals, you can get trade-in deals and stuff like that with carriers. So if you want to get it for cheap, um, like this, for instance, was thirteen hundred, but I am paying it over time, and I got it out the door for like about three hundred dollars because of uh, the trade-in as well with my wife's iPhone thirteen Pro Max. So yeah, T-Mobile does a great thing. Um, and then I also had, you know, my my wife wanted Galaxy buds and like the earbuds and then she wanted a watch too so i was i you know i got that stuff for her because i wanted to you know be happy and stuff so um so yeah we got the uh but yeah the display likes to turn off very quickly which is uh it is what it is i did not set the, the timing on that um but we will in the settings i will change it up but yeah so as you can see anyway um we have a nice display i believe it is 2k um it's qhd so i believe it does have a 2k display which is awesome if you want the best android phone for a display go with sony um, I believe the, the pixels per inch on this thing is like 420 something or 500 something. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, but it is, it is very high. And if you're not super interested in that number, if you are interested in that number, um, uh, there is, I believe it's 426. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's 426. It could be higher. It actually could be over 500. Not sure. Repeated that, but that's my guess. Um, that was basically what it was last year. So yeah. Um, yeah, so overall, dude, the phone, I think, just just actually impressions of the phone. I like, for instance, how the silver on the front is very prominent. You don't really have an issue with not seeing the silver. They do a good job of making it feel like you got a silver phone. I think something that I'm bummed about um, with displays being edge-to-edge -edge is that we don't have any uh, colorful bezels anymore. Sorry, I'm getting that smudge off. The thing is driving me crazy. I hope that gets it off. Um, yeah, we don't have any, um, what do you call it? Oh, another smudge. Nice. We don't really have the room, I guess, for bezels that are white. Like, if you remember when they had, like, the white iPhone, um, there was a lot of room on the front, so they had a lot of white. Of course, they had the black around it, but I just missed when there was different color fronts. So Samsung does a good job, I think, of listening to that and making sure you can see the silver so you know, you know, you got a different edition than maybe, let's say, all, the all-black one because they all pretty much look the same on the front. But Samsung did a good job. Also, they have a pretty cool transition with their wallpapers when you sign in or when you log in or whatever. They show notifications here. You have Tuesday, February 6th. You have the time, 1.52 p.m. You have T-Mobile in the corner. It's going to show your your carrier, which is nice. Um, we have the camera cutout. If you want a phone without a camera cutout, go to the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. It does not have a camera bump, but the camera quality is not as good on the front, so that's the trade-off. But it is still pretty decent. But regardless, this is, I believe, 16 megapixels. And it, very, it very much looks great. I think it actually records up to 4K, too, which is pretty insane for a front-facing camera. Good job, Samsung. Good job. Um, another one is um, the volume. If you know, if you want it silent or whatever, you know, you go over here. You can change up the volume. I believe I'll have to go ahead and adjust another setting so I don't drive myself crazy with this thing turning up. But it has Wi-Fi 6. Um, it has up to 5G. It works with U.S. carriers. And I believe if you get the unlocked one, you can do it internationally as well. Um, you can double tap to turn the screen on and double tap to turn, turn the screen off. You can go into settings and actually remove that if you want. It is 74% battery right now. It has a 5,500 million hour or 5,000 million hour battery, I believe. Or actually, it is a little bit better. I believe that the battery life is better overall. I haven't actually used this 
Um, but I can check the battery settings. My wife is the one that's primarily using this, but I've only had uh, just pretty much close observations of the phones. From what I can see, it seems like she only has to charge her phone at night. Uh, it seems like realistically, like there's no real need for that, uh, for her to charge her phone again. So yeah, the battery I believe is 5,000 mAh, hours, and yeah, so the battery is good. Shows percentage, which is nice. You can just change that. So swipe to open. Like I said, the battery, the wallpaper looks good. You have the the phone um, icon down here and the camera icon. So you can go ahead and swipe it. Uh, what do you call it? If you go down here, it pulls into the camera or pulls in the phone. Hmm. Yeah, sorry. And then the camera right here. And it shows that you can um, swipe air. One sec. Um, that's weird. Uh, I guess I have it. Be oh, it's maintenance mode. So there's no lock on it. Duh. Um, yeah, so you can swipe to the left for the camera down here. It'll go there. And then, yeah. So you can also, it looks like you don't have to swipe exactly up. You can swipe to the left or the right on the home screen to get in. So when you get in, you have notifications up top. We're going to do this. So this is what your phone's going to look like actually when you get it because I have it in maintenance mode. It doesn't have any of my wife's personal features on it, which I think is good because it also allows you to have privacy. So something that Samsung does that's actually pretty great is they allow this maintenance mode. Maintenance mode is actually amazing, guys. Like I really think that this is something that Samsung just has on other phones. Other phones might have this and they might have just added this, but I do believe Samsung is kind of like the quote-unquote pioneer with this. I think that they did such a freaking good job coming up with this. So you can pretty much have your phone locked in maintenance mode. So when you hand it off to somebody, they're not, you know, they don't snoop through your photos. They don't get your information, get your passwords, all that stuff, man. You can pretty much guarantee that no one's going to be nosy with your stuff. And, and yeah, um, sweet. So when you first log into the phone or first get in, you have, uh, the icons that are going to be at the bottom. You're going to have the phone messages, um, and Samsung has default messages, but I believe it also comes with Google messages, which is nice because Google messages or Google messenger um, this includes RCS by default. So if you want RCS on your phone, um, which is the, basically it's like MMS, but it allows you, but it's much better. So it actually, it sends text faster. It receives text, allows emotional reactions, like the <laughs> emotional reactions, emoji reactions. You can, you, know, you can do thumbs up and you actually do, you can do all kinds of, um, all kinds of reactions, actually any kind of emoji, which is nice. It's not limited to a few that like Apple has. So shout out, <laughs> excuse me, shout out to Samsung for that. Um, and, uh, and then shout out to Google too for having that in their phone. Um, the, yeah, the messaging is nice, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah sweet. So you, you sign in and all that. Um, I don't want to show my messages, but yeah, basically it's, it's Google Messenger. If you have an internet phone right now, you can actually download it and you can actually just experience it. I believe they also might have it on the iPhone as well. So if you have a phone, just look up Google Messenger and you, you can see exactly what I mean. But they, it also sends high quality videos. It can send things without killing the quality, which I think is very, very awesome. And I think that this is a great job. Uh, done by them so you can you know swipe left and right and you can either set it so it does infinite loop or you can set it to where it's just one and then you can also this one usually has like a feed on the left but we decided to take that off because i personally think it's annoying it i don't really want to see some stressful news thing like i don't want to think about stressful things and i suggest you do the same i think that ignorance is bliss and it's it's nice um, yeah, so as you can see, we also have the box there. Samsung does okay with the box. I think they, them just including a cord and the box is super lame. I'm not going to lie. They, uh, Flossy Carter, shout out to that dude because that guy is probably one of the best reviewers. Um, and I definitely feel, um, my lengthy videos were inspired by him. I've always really admired his ability to just make videos, have a lot of information and really, really hone on the things that people really feel like they want in a phone that isn't just going over specs and things like that. And so... I really uh, have a lot of respect for that guy, um, and yeah, and I hope one day this channel gets as big as his because he he's awesome, man. Um, but yeah, shout out to that dude. Um, I believe I forgot what I was saying, but that guy is a legend. Um, yeah, so we have everything here. Um, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I remembered. So one thing he was saying is that you know it's like going to a fancy restaurant and buying an expensive steak for hundred dollars. This was his example. So shout out to this guy. He made it. He hit it home perfectly with this so props to Fossey Carter but he made a great point he was saying the hundred dollar steak if you get it it's like if a restaurant basically gums and says oh they want to save on you know not washing dishes and stuff so they hand you a paper plate plastic knife plastic fork or you could have a bo unboxing experience like I think that this was actually a pretty good unboxing experience this is my bit, uh, reference that I have recently where the, you know they at least give you a case <laughs> and then actually you know I sold I ended up selling my Transformers Edition phone, but that thing was a beast, man. That was actually $1,300. Same cost as this overall. 
Um, but I mean, you had a fan, literally a fan, like a hardware fan. If you want to see my Red Magic 8S Pro Plus uh, full review video, I show you everything in the box. I also have an unboxing video where you can catch my reactions off the phone. Really awesome, really exciting unboxing experience. But yeah, this is basically the paper Nike, Nike, <laughs> the paper uh, plate, the plastic knife and spoon and fork version of a unboxing. So unfortunately, yeah, the phone is not. This phone does not have the greatest. Um, experience with unboxing, which is why I didn't even bother to do a video because nobody really wants to see me take it out of a flat box with a cord in it. I mean, it's kind of like redundant. Um, and then I know, and excuse me, other people have that anyway. So yeah, stutter. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's say you want to go to the top. So you pull that down. Everything's on the same one. Um, notification notifications you can swipe them left or right you can adjust your brightness here you can go to the toggle so wi-fi bluetooth you can change up how you want it do you want silent do you want this do you want that uh i'm gonna keep it on vibrate that's my wi-fi on auto rotate airplane mode and flashlight um which is pretty nice so they definitely seem to um you know consider people traveling and things like that by having that up there as an easy toggle so if you want to do it again you can swipe down um yeah like that and then they have the big wi-fi they tell you what one you're on my wife is into drag queen stuff, so apparently that is a, Miss Vanjie is a drag queen that my wife is a big fan of. Um, I'm sure if you have a wife. Okay, Lauren, stop. Um, yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, so, man, he threw me off. Um, yeah, anyway, so the, the there's the, the Wi-Fi or whatever. It's it's nice. And then you have Bluetooth. Then you have Vibrate, Auto Rotate, AirPlay Mode, um, Flashlight, Power Saving, Location, Screen Recorder, uh, Quick Share, Do Not Disturb, Scan, QR Code, uh, Interpreter, so it'll interpret languages, which is actually pretty sweet. I think that's really awesome. Multi-control, you can control different devices. You can do the Brightness. You can do the Eye Comfort Shield and then Dark Mode. Um, which I think is sweet. Eye comfort shield. I think that basically makes it like, you know, um, so when you're at night or, uh, really at any time of the day where you're just staring at your phone a lot, removes the blue light, which also might help with sleep. Um, it says that it helps with sleep. And so, yeah. And then you have smart view and then you have device control, which is awesome. You can hit edit. You can go and do, um, uh, what do we call it? Um, yeah, there's edit and then full and then there's quick settings, instant access, bright, uh, brightness control. You can always show it. Uh, device control and media output buttons. Show when quick panel is compiled, maintenance mode, all that stuff. Sweet. So you can edit the stuff like that, which I think is awesome. Yeah. So they give you a lot of toggles up here. Um, and then you can go and if I do want to edit it, um, uh, I did this, but yeah, device control, blah, 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 brightness control always yeah yeah and then sweet um yeah so that's the notification bar uh notification panel looks pretty good you can go into settings so i guess it's a good time to go into settings so the samsung account connections you can go in here and you find all the local wi-fi you can do wi-fi bluetooth nfc ultra wideband airplay mode data usage you can see more connection settings so more connection settings we go into it there's printing there's a uh, keep system configuration up to date uh network unlocks you can unlock your phone's network um where you can check if your phone is unlocked um, and yeah, and then they have suggestions so like Android Auto or Quick Share if you're looking for something else. And if you really want to find it, you can search. And I believe the search is overall, no matter where you're at, which is pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, those are all the connection settings. And then you have, um, what do you want to call it? You have um, sounds vibration, which is awesome. So there's the ringtone. You can go in here. They have a bunch of default ones. I'll have to turn it up because, it, oops, it's pretty loud. Yeah, it's pretty, I don't know, I wouldn't want to keep that. And I, I don't know about you, but when I had older phones, I used to used to run through ringtones because it was kind of fun. Uh, shit, the first one. 
So we'll go back to that one. And then you can choose silent. You can adjust the ringtone volume. Oops, my bad. Um, you can do galaxy bells. So for brand sounds. Cool. And then we have uh, the three toggles up here. So sound, vibrate, mute, um, vibrate when ringing. Um, you can do ringtone, like I said, notification sounds. So they have a bunch of these too. Uh, they are showing, if, if you uh, obviously you can't feel this, so uh, they are doing the double vibration effect as I click to the different ones to show you what the vibration will feel like. It feels very strong, actually, which is pretty sweet. It's freaking intense. <laughs> These sounds are great. I don't even know. Kind of like that one, but uh, let's go back to the one that she had, I believe. Like that. So, sweet. And then we have the system sound. So you can do system sound theme. You can change up to fun. Yeah, so it's kind of just stuff like that. So touch interactions. It'll do pretty much a little click sound. But I'm gonna turn that off. Um, yeah, actually, sorry about that. There were um, other things really quickly. So, yeah, so you have touch interactions, dialing keypad sounds, system keyboard charging um, sounds when you plug the charger in, and then screen lock and unlock. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty sweet. And then you have down here just says uh, you can also change up vibration feedback for your system, which is pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Um, you have volume, so ringtone, media, notification system, volume buttons for media, uh, call vibration, um, all that stuff. So you can do, whoa, yeah, you can, I, obviously you can't feel them, but it's basically just like doing different ones. Um, I don't know if this will... Yeah, there's no way you guys will be able to kind of hear it, but... Basically, it does have a little bit of a um, sound to it. So there's a bunch of them. I'd go through all of them, but basically you can't feel any of them, so it's basically useless for me to just do that. Um, but yeah, that's something that I guess to look forward to that you can't experience um, on the video um, is actually just something like that. So that's pretty sweet. So we have um, uh, we have volume control, um, all that stuff that I just showed, and then call vibration. We have all these, and then we like I just showed you notification vibration, same thing. We have system vibration, so you can change up the intensity um, if you want it. There's five different levels. I think I'll put it back to where she had it. Um, touch interactions, dialing keypads. This is where you want, where you're going to get the, the haptic feedback. So there's uh, dialing keypad, Samsung keyboard, charging, camera feedback. Pretty sweet. Um, we have the, let's see here, sound quality and effects. So if we want... This uh, Dolby Atmos is uh, enabled on this phone. I just don't have it uh, on in maintenance mode. It's kind of a default. <clears throat> and then, yeah, we will also see um, right here. So there's all the other ones. Whew. Okay, nice. So it sounds, not notifications. So we have app notifications. Um, let's go into here. You can do specific ones for actually, sp or specific apps, I believe. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, 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 this is a common Android thing, but basically you can turn on um, notifications for each app. Pretty pretty common. Uh, we can go up in here. Let's see if there's any options. Show system apps. So you can actually have uh, built-in system apps. But this is just going to show some stuff that you can that are more generic apps. So, yeah, especially if it's like somebody uh, that's not too familiar with all the system apps. They're just going to show generic ones that people might interact with normally. Um, so you have that. You have the sort notifications. Um, let's see here. Um, okay. Sorry, the focus keeps uh, changing. I don't think your brightness is being adjusted, but the the brightness on my screen is being adjusted, which is a bit irritating. I'm not going to lie. Um, but anyway, we have the sort notifications. Uh, we have the 
lock screen notifications. So we can do priority or time. Um, probably time is a little bit better, to be honest. I think time's better. I mean, I, I would want the newest one, but then again, we'll go back to priority. I don't want to adjust any of her default settings. We have uh, lock screen notifications. So go on here, uh, which ones can show, so you can change up which apps actually show lock screen notifications. So if you have some sensitive stuff you don't want ever showing, you can do that. So you can do hide content, show content when unlocked, um, notifications to show. So you can either have it as um, the alert and silent notifications or alert notifications only. So basically super important things only. Um, and then we have notification pop-up style. So we can, you can either, either do, excuse me, either do brief or detailed which is pretty freaking sweet. So we have do not disturb. You can turn that on. Do not disturb for how long you have sleeping. You can add a call to schedule, calls, messages, app notifications, so alarms and sounds. Sweet. Um, we have this right here. Um, yeah, so do not disturb like I had said. And then we have advanced settings right here. So we have the uh, notification bar, battery percentage, notification history, conversations, floating bubbles or floating notifications for bubbles. Um, you can either do pop-up, smart view, or whatever like that, which is pretty sweet. And then, yeah, um, we have, uh, uh, you can show the app icon and notifications. You can suggest actions and replies for notifications. You can show a snooze button, repeat notification alerts, app icon badges. We have manage, uh, you can manage notification categories for each app, which is pretty sweet. Um, like this, and then, yeah, and then advanced notifications. I believe I just showed you those. Uh, apologies about that. And then we can go back to here. So now we have the actually connected devices. You can do a quick share, music share, auto switch, buds, continue apps uh, um, on other devices. Sorry, it's kind of hard to read with the focus thing in the way. Um, multi control, smart view, smart things, Android auto. So yeah, they have things like that, which is pretty sweet. Um, basically, it's just you can share things very quickly. Um, one thing that I do want to point out randomly, um, Google Meet on here works really well. I had I had used both my phones, and it popped up as quick as FaceTime. It was just as good as FaceTime, um, which was really really awesome. I thought, I think I thought it was pretty pretty awesome. Um, we got the sounds and vibration notifications. Okay. Anyway, we can go display, and then we can do, um, so you can change up the brightness. It shows you when this will actually damage your eyes, or it'll burn through the phone, pretty much by making the phone really hot. Um, but, yeah, you can do light mode or dark mode. You can search up there, of course. You can do adaptive brightness, adaptive smoothness, uh, smoothness, smoothness. Um, the eye comfort shield, adaptive color tone, so you can adjust colors and white balance based on ambient lighting conditions to make colors appear more natural in different environments. Pretty freaking sweet. Oh, use your cam sensor. Oh, yeah. So screen resolution, you do three. You can do HD, FHD, being full HD plus. Or they're both all plus, but I just think it's kind of gimmicky. But um, but then you have the 1440p display, otherwise known as 2K. So that's pretty freaking sweet, dude. We have full screen apps if you want. You can set um, full screen apps. You can do the camera cutout. Um, if you want it to show. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. You can hide the camera cutout area by covering it with a black bar. Eh, nah, I don't really like that. Uh, I thought it was going to be something that pops over it, which would have been, which would have been pretty sweet. Um, there's assistant. So for the camera um, cutout, you basically can choose which apps you want to have it or not. So yeah, it can do all, all the apps that are installed and stuff. Sweet. You can do the screen timeout navigation bar, accidental touch, for, uh, accidental touch protection, touch sensitivity, and then show charging information, the screen saver. So you can have um, this or whatever. So you can just kind of do that photo table, photo frame, colors. So yeah, screen saver. Nice, dude. Um, so basically, yeah, nothing will get burned in this. But I don't think it really does that anymore. But if it does, uh, it's definitely protecting that from happening. I think that's a built-in Samsung thing. I remember, or a built-in Android thing. I remember that happening, uh, coming out in like Jelly Bean, Android 5 or Android 4 something, uh, ice cream sandwich. One of those. Um, yeah, 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 so right here. Sorry, y'all. Um, we can do battery. So it's going to show the, it's learning the usage patterns. 72 available power saving, background usage limits. You can go in here. You can do put unused apps to sleep, never auto, never auto sleeping apps. 
sleeping apps and de- or deep sleeping apps. So basically, you can make it so no phones, uh, no services on apps can be used if you haven't touched the app in a while. Like it's not going to be running in the background and things like that. And I think um, Samsung does a good job of managing that. So we have that. Let's see here. So power saving, background use, usage limits, battery protection. So you can basically make it so that um, it's not going to, yeah, just charging behavior um, to extend the lifespan of your battery. So you can see what, what we did today. Um, and then there's charging, power saving at the bottom, and then they have battery usage, no app usage, view details, charging settings. Let's see in charging settings, there's show charging information, fast charging, fast wireless charging. Sweet. So you have the battery information too. Um, it's not charging, of course. You have the battery level and then the battery capacity is 5,000 milliamp hours, which is a typical amount. So awesome. Um, and there's a thing that they put down there. Maybe there's information on saving battery and stuff like that. So um, I like the tips at the bottom, especially for people who don't really understand Android phones or phones in general and they have a hard time navigating certain things. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, wallpaper and style. So yeah, we have some customization here, guys. We can go in here and we can change up what we want. We can actually change up the icons, move them around, I think. Um, believe so. Uh, wallpapers, you can change this stuff up right here. So if I wanted to change the clock style, I can make it so it's like this or this or this or this. Which I'm going to go with the one that she had originally. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. You can change up the font. Yeah, basically the uh, the first one was good. And then, yeah, so we can do this and then wallpapers. You can see the different ones. So you see featured wallpapers that have that effect that I had mentioned. Um, they do look pretty sweet. They have night mode and light mode ones so that if you switch, it'll show um, both variants, which I think is pretty sweet. You have gallery. Um, of course, no photos are going to show in there, but if you had taken photos and things like that, it's going to show in there. You have graphical things like um, the... Um, we'll call it, yeah, so just graphical ones, you can go in here and you can see them in detail. And then if you want, let's say click on it, it'll show like that. I think it looks pretty good. Um, but then we have the same thing over here. I'll kind of continue uh, looking through the wallpapers on this one, right? So we have colors and you go through all the colors. It'll show it bigger like that. And then if we go, yeah, so that's all the wallpapers and that's all the wallpaper settings, which I think is pretty sweet. So you can, you can choose if you want the wallpaper to dim in dark mode, like I had shown you with the two variants of the wallpapers. And then change wallpapers, they'll go back into the same thing. You can access it from there as well, which I think is pretty sweet. You can always search, like I've said 100,000 times, so sorry about that again. Um, but home screen. So home screen layout, you can do the home and app screens. So you can choose if you just want home screen only, like an iPhone, or if you want, or like an iPhone used to be. Or you can um, have home and app screens as well. So you swipe up. It's the thing where you like swipe up from the bottom or whatever. Um, speaking of swiping, if you want to get to the top, um, something you can do that. But if you're on the home screen or not anything where there's actual direct in-app uh, in app interaction, you can just swipe down from the top and it'll pull the notification bar down. And then you can do it from the bottom to pull the tray up. But it's mainly on the home screen, like I had said. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. So, we have the that. And then we have the home screen grid. You can go in here and change up the what you want. Like this, this. It'll just do it like that. But I'm going to go back to 4x6 because that's what she had set. And then same thing here. And then we have the folder grid. So that's actually pretty sweet. Within folders, you can change that up too, which I think is awesome. It's a lot of customization that Samsung is giving us. They've done a great job of deep-loading the phones, guys. A lot of people think that Samsung phones just come with a ton of bloatware. Um, it does take up 4 to 5 gigs. So if you have the biggest model, you're really only left with 6 to 7 gigabytes left for apps, um, which is fine. <laughs> but you can imagine how if you got the eight, the... If you got the regular one with 8 gigs of RAM and didn't get the Ultra, I mean, it's kind of suffering a little bit. Um, so that's why I very much appreciate the 24 gigs of RAM on the phone I am recording on, the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. I always support that one. I push that one up because that phone is freaking awesome. It does not have as nice of a display. Um, it is pretty much just a full HD Plus display. Um, they have a, they call it Q9 Plus. I don't know. I think it's a gimmicky name for what it really is, which is just an average display. Um, it, it doesn't look bad. It's not terrible. It's not like it's like some potato screen like we used to have with, with certain phones. Um, like, you know, low budget Android phones are actually interesting. They're increasing. This is by no means a budget Android phone. I got this thing for 1200, 24 gigs of RAM, all that stuff. And so actually speaking of all of that, I did not really go through the specs. So I apologize. So it has a Snapdragon HN3, um, which is clocked at, I believe it caps at 3.2 gigahertz. It's an octa core processor. They have each processor with different amounts, um, of for clock speed, but I think Samsung does a great job of allocating different, um, processing to do different things, like it'll ramp up your clock speed when you get into games, for instance, things like that. So they do a very good job of that. Um, so shout out to Samsung for always doing a great job with that. They've had a lot of time to push their phones. I mean, this is 24th one. 
Um, I mean, it's not the 24th. It's probably actually the the 21st, probably, because um, I believe uh, actually the I think it's the 23rd actually. But regardless, they have literally or no, I think it's like the 13th or the 14th. It's probably. I mean, iPhone 15's out, so it's probably the, it's probably the 15th actually, to be honest. But they jumped from 10 to 20 because of the 20 years, I guess, for Samsung or it was 2000. I, I don't know exactly why they did that, but they did jump from the S10 to the S20. Um, I have no idea uh, why they did that. But regardless, yeah, so Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, um, they have, what do you want to call it, uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM, like I had mentioned. Um, you can do extended RAM, I think up to 8 to 10 gigs um, extra. But VRAM, if it gets prioritized, it does increase graphical performance, but not by much. It actually slows the phone down, especially on Samsung phones from what I've noticed. So I just keep the default amount of RAM. Um, you'll see in the settings when I actually get to the RAM. But um but I just want to talk about that. So you get, you get a good amount of RAM. You get a nice processor. You have, uh, this is 256 gigs. I'm by Red Magic 9 Pro Plus for the same thing. I have a, like, I'm talking 24 gigs of the same LPDDR5X RAM and a terabyte of storage for 1300 And that's on a good website. If you actually want a discounted phone, though, for the same, actually, 24 gigs and one terabyte, one, the OnePlus 12 is the way to go. A user had pointed out to me that the OnePlus 12 is a very nice phone. Um, so, yeah, OnePlus is the way to go um, if you're looking for a cheaper version of a phone with better specs than this, actually. So... Um, but the one thing that Samsung always has is build quality. They always do a good job with aesthetics, everything, details. Samsung is very good at that. These phones look fantastic. They're they're the probably the best looking phones out right now. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so in terms of visual appeal, um, Samsung absolutely takes cake for that. So that's great. Yeah, we have. Uh, so that's basically the most important things. Um, like I said, the cameras are good. 16 and then 50, 12, and um, yeah, I think there's two 12s. And then there is a 200 as well. And there's a 100 times zoom, which I think is freaking crazy, dude. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we'll get back to that. But that's basically the basic specs. Of course, there's the S10. We'll get over that to, to that too. Um, of course, I know you guys want to see that. But regardless, hopefully the... Um, I know that Google puts uh, videos that breaks up videos. So hopefully it will put things into proper category um, for you guys if you want to skip ahead and things like that. Um and yeah, so we have the show app screen button, lock screen home layout, uh, apps to home screen, hide apps on home screen and app screens. Uh, so you can do badges if you want. Uh, like if you have a notification, it's going to show a little notification in the corner. You swipe down for notification, notification panel like I had mentioned and then rotate landscape mode. Sweet. Um, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, it's not going to change anything up though. About a home screen. So it gives you the version of one UI. And then it gives you the open source licenses. So if you're into all the legality stuff like that, um, they have the option for you to see that. Um, so lock screen always on display. So they have the lock screen type, which is swipe. They have extended unlock. They have always on display. Touch and hold to edit. Uh, roaming clock widgets. Let's see widgets. What do we have here? So music and weather. Let's see if it turns on the weather. Uh, I'm just going to have weather on there because I actually think that looks good. You can reorder them. Um, you can do uh, about lock screen, and then and then Android has so many widgets because they've had widgets since the beginning. So you in the App Store you have so many freaking widgets, dude. Widgets from literally the moment Android was released. Um, you have widgets. Apple is very far behind. I mean, I think they added it on iOS 13 or 14 or whatever it was, uh, iOS 12 maybe. But they added it recently, so there's nowhere near the amount of widgets you can get on Android versus iOS. That's something to consider if if uh, widgets are very important to you. Um, but yeah, I will actually show some widgets on the home screen when I get back there, but I want to keep going through the uh, settings like this. So we have the security and privacy. We have the lock screen, the account security. They have the app security. We have biometrics. So that's pretty much just like how you want to sign in. Face recognition, fingerprints. Um, I am not going to add any of that, but basically it does unlock fast. Um, it, it is decent. Um, you know who you can check out? Uh, Flossie Carter, his uh, full review is um, Snyder Cut. He actually is a good... Uh, he does show a very good example of face unlock um, and how it works. I think it's decent, but when it's on camera, it's not very good. But in terms of like super quick speed, it's not the best, but it isn't terrible. I mean, we're at a point where any kind of face unlock is going to be great at this point. It's not like it's new tech. It's very old tech, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, but it is crazy. We have fingerprint scanners and face recognition on phone. On phones, not phone singular. Phone plural. Nice. Okay. <laughs> phones. <laughs> Um, so we have everything, it tells you everything like that, and then fingerprints, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I guess that was probably the amount of time. Um, account security, and then app security, biometrics, like I said, auto blockers, you can keep your app, you can do, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's, um, 
Yeah, I guess I can't do it in this uh, thing right here. Um, I think it's supported on this phone. I don't think it's supported in maintenance, but I think that's what it's saying. Um, so we have permission manager. We can do app permissions. Um, it'll go and do everything, and it'll show the apps within it, which I think is pretty sweet. It also shows apps, app activity right here. So permissions used. It'll show which ones. So nearby devices. It use it look for nearby devices. It looked for contacts. This one looks for location and camera, and things like that. So we have find my device. Um, so yeah, use find my device. So really, what this is is actually you can just go on Google. You can search find my Android, <clears throat> and if you're assigned into a Google account on a phone, it'll automatically allow you to find the phone. So you can just hit a play like play ringtone. It'll play the ringtone, and you can find your phone no matter where you're at. Doesn't matter what device, any device that has your that you're signed into. On your Google, if you go to any other device um, and try to and then sign into your account, you can look for your phone. It's really, really convenient and awesome, and I think that they do such a good job. Um, so additional privacy controls, and then we have more privacy settings. So we have the privacy website. The actually, I want to show additional privacy controls: we're going to camera access, microphone access, and alert when clipboard assess. Cool. Um, we have uh, so I said Samsung privacy website. The new special offers on this phone approved. Personalized ads based on data, send diagnostic data, so you can pretty much send reports uh, on the phone um, to you know the primary. Uh, what do you call it? You basically just send um, uh, reports uh, every once in a while. I don't know how frequently they do it, but it'll send reports to Samsung so that they can improve. It'll, it's like bug reports and things like that. So, but it'll do it automatically. So I personally don't really ever choose that. But uh, you, so you can do Android personalization services, data sharing, uh, Android system intelligence, health connect, autofill service, activity control. See what's in there. Okay, can't do that. I guess this is all like stuff you need to be signed into. Ads, so opt out of ad personalization. Ads by Google, enable debug logging for ads. So actually if you root phones, you can install ad blocks so you never have ads on your phone. So that's something about Android that's great. Just look up Android roots. Um, I have not rooted my 9 Pro Plus yet, but I am considering rooting it. Um, I just, I mean, the ad thing is nice, but other than that, there's no real reason, I guess, unless you want to get into deep into the system and modify it. I personally don't. I'm more casual than actually, you know, a deep user, uh, contrary to how much I, how many phones I buy and how much I know about phones. I don't really go that deep. I just do these, uh, reviews. So yeah. Um, did I actually air one sec? Sorry guys, real quick. More privacy settings. Yeah, did I do this? Um, so there's like enhanced data protection. Sorry about that. Yeah, we have this. Samsung password, install unknown apps, make passwords visible, device admin apps, view security certificates, user certificates, install from device storage, um, pin app, there's trust agents. All this stuff will be um, not uh, pretty much, all this stuff won't be blocked out when you're out of maintenance mode, which we will be in a second. I'm just getting everything out of the way in terms of uh, how things look so none of my wife's info shows up on things. So pin app and then Sam's uh, Galaxy system app updates and then security and privacy, right? So you have all this stuff, like I said before, and then accounts backups. There's no accounts, but you can manage your Google accounts in here. You can do Google services. So there's ads, autofill, all this stuff, which I think is pretty sweet. Uh, I mean, actually, I'll do ads, autofill, device plans, device sharing, find my device. You can do the user up here, check info, blah, blah, blah. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, so that'll allow you to sign into your Google account or access your Google account information. Um, device sharing, find my device, mobile data, messaging, per, uh, parental controls. You still need to be kind of signed into Google for all this. So set up or store settings for Google apps. Um, whoops. Um, and then Firebase app indexing. Cool, man. Cool. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, so now we have advanced features. So advanced intelligence. You can do AI stuff like that. Um, you have to be signed in, but the AI stuff is pretty sweet. Actually, yes, yeah, so we have S Pen. Um, so it'll tell you, uh, we'll go from the top, sorry. Advanced Intelligence, so actually we'll go back in here. It'll do all this. This is the AI thing for this new phone. So Samsung AI is actually pretty sweet. So Labs allows new things like you know multi-window for all apps. So it'll basically force apps to be uh, sectioned off in apps, so I think, which I think is pretty sweet. Other Android phones have this, but I think Samsung does a really good job of this. So Photo Ambient Wallpaper, you have the... Um, Wallpaper uses advanced intelligence to change your own photo based on the time and weather. You can set this as wallpaper in settings, wallpaper in style, change wallpapers. Nice, dude. That's pretty sweet. So, like, let's say it's snowing out. You can have it. So, where if the phone 
knows that it's cold out based on your location and based on what the weather reporting is it will switch it over to like a snowy background which i think is actually pretty sweet um this is something that for people who are long like long-term phone users or even short-term phone users i probably wouldn't go in and do this but that's just because i don't really do too much with deep customization um more of just a game player or really i go on reddit and i talk to people about stuff that's pretty <laughs> that's actually what i do recently so yeah we can do swipe for pop-up view swipe for split screen Full screen, split screen view. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, that's what she said. Sorry. <laughs> like Michael Scott, dude. Um, uh, motion, motions and gestures. We have lift to wake. Uh, so if you like pick it up, it'll do that. Double tap to turn the screen on. Double tap off. Uh, so you get alert when the phone is picked up. If your phone uh, will vibrate, it'll vibrate when you pick it up after missing a call or message. That's kind of cool. So it'll tell you, do like a little thump to tell you that you missed something, which I think is pretty sweet. Mute with gestures, palm swipe capture. Swipe your edge across the screen. Whoa. That's fucking cool. Um, yeah, so you just do a swipe. Nice, dude. That's actually pretty sick. I didn't know that existed. Um, yeah, so that's cool. You have motion gestures and stuff like that. You can also um, install custom launchers, which have more gestures. I'm talking like finger swipes, like stuff like that. So Nova Launcher or Apex Launcher, those are about the best, I'm assuming. Unless something new has come up, I think those are the best launchers. But we're just kind of sticking with the default that you get with the phone. So this is what you get. This is what you get out of the box. Like exactly how this phone looks right now. This is fresh out of the box. Um, yeah, so screenshots. You can, you can do uh, show toolbar after capturing. You can this Which, which was that thing at the bottom you had saw. Um, so... Uh, delete after sharing, hide status and notification bar, save original screenshots, format, you can do JPEG or PNG. Um, PNG allows you to kind of pull or have like a specific thing. Like I think PNG is good if you need to pull like character models or something into what you're doing. Or if you need to get uh, something and you need to have photoshopped, it's basically going to have the background blurred out and have the focus on one thing. And then you can pretty much just have the object already cut out when you pull it into an app editor like Bazaar or something like that, which I use. Always download the hacked version. Um, I, I mean, pay for it and support them if you want, but I personally download the cracked version because I don't think I want to pay that much money um, for a thing I can always get for free. So select folder if I want folders like that to where I can save the screenshots. So that's if you're exploring the files on the phone and all of that. So yeah, we have, um, and if you can see the battery is still pretty good. It's down to 71% just by basic usage, but you can always uh charge things up it takes about an hour to charge the phone up with fast charging so it's not too terrible but that might also be from zero but like i said the phone lasts all day and especially if you're a casual user you are completely fine um sweet so we have record sound the video quality uh we can do like that for screen recording selfie video size you can change up the size of it you can do show taps and touches so it'll do like a visible boop thing and then where you save the recording so i like that they have uh they show you a way you can sort of they allow you to control exactly where they're saved on the phone in the settings up front that haven't actually go and move things or anything like that in a separate video file or, or excuse me, a separate filing app. Um, so yeah, so you have um, all this stuff that I had mentioned, um, like so video call effects. So you can do background color, like let's say I want it as a rainbow or orange. Um, yeah, cool. And then you can do uh, available apps for Meet. So like I had mentioned earlier, Google Meet is awesome for video calling. After about video call effects, it'll tell you everything uh, you need to know in detail, which is pretty sweet. You have video brightness, uh, normal, or you have bright. So you can change up which one you want to be bright. I think it's just going to either do display brightness or it actually might adjust the colors to make it look or, or might do a combo of both. That is my speculation. I'm not 100% sure. But you have all the info at the bottom. Pretty freaking sweet. Um, so let's see here. You have advanced features like I had shown you before. Boom. All right, advanced features. Now we have digital wellness and parental controls. So if you are a parent that is paranoid, a paranoid motherfucking parent, you can control your kids' uh, entire lives with this. No, I'm kidding. Uh, give them space, bro. Um, I got you, dogs. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, yeah, notifications. Uh, show digital well-being on app screen. You have uh, usage data access. So I believe it's going to show um basically the usage on the phone oh it's basically if you have access to usage data um sweet so or if the uh i guess if the kid has access to it or something i don't really know exactly digital well-being is going to tell you everything open source licenses and all that so let's go into notifications see oh we can have a we can have it in the notifications um so allows a lot of sound and vibration silent um all that stuff so you can do that i think this is just allowing 
um, some sort of control, I believe. Um, yeah, so the most used app right now is settings just because of the fact that they don't have any data from my wife's actual phone. It would be different if we were looking on there. But yeah, so here, um, oh, so there's a weekly report of what you've done and you can go in here and access it or you can search again. You can do settings like this, settings, and then like I'd shown you right there. Cool, and then we'll go down here, app timer. So you can set a timer for messages, for social, stuff like that. For volume monitor, you can check and see how you want to do that. So you can actually have it um, do a sound test and then it'll do it based on how comfortable you are. So there's parental controls, all that. You can have it based on your Google account. And so yeah, if you are looking for you know screen time and things like that and kind of man uh, managing that, you can do that. So uh, there's device care. There is, uh, you can optimize it. Basically it's gonna turn certain things off, but it's it's good. I like how they have the little like gauge based on like if it's like great, good, all that stuff. And there's like a smiley face, I think it's pretty cool. So learning usage patterns, they have 179.3 gigabytes available out of 256. Um, like I said, on other phones you can get about a terabyte for the same cost as this phone, so that's something to keep in mind, but they do have better build quality. They do have better cameras and things like that. So this is a very aesthetically pleasing, outwardly pleasing phone. So if you want something that pleases the eye, it's the way to go. So there is um, 5.3 gigs already used, and then there's included, uh, included system, um, RAM, and then yeah, so you can go in here, and then you can do ex uh, RAM plus, um, like that, so actually it is giving us more, so like let's say I want to clean it up, you just go in and clean it up. It is weird that, uh, yeah, 6.6 available, but I do believe it, uh, memory resident apps. Okay, so it's basically showing apps that might run in the background all the time. So yeah, all these apps kind of popped up again, but at least a lot of them seem to be good. You can exclude apps from it by intentionally not allowing them to run in the background. You can do, um, so performance profile for standard or light if you're trying to save battery or keep the phone cold or basically cool, like, you know what I mean? So you can do that. You can do auto optimization. You can have the device um, optimize itself. Um, so it can kind of just choose based on your usage. Um, exit maintenance mode. So actually guys, also, if you get the phone and the display doesn't look good, go into your display settings and change it to QHD. This is how you get the high quality display. People, I don't even think people who buy the phone that are older realize you, you can change the quality of the screen. Like, um, I think they just accept the 1080p and they're like, Ooh, <laughs> or like they'll literally see the iPhone one looks better because they don't go in and change it to the max. And I don't know why I think it might be to preserve battery within the box or something at the phone house. Some, somehow gets turned on or things like that. I don't really know exactly why they have it at FHD plus by default, but yeah, make sure you go and change that to QHD and then go in and change actually the gesture speed too. Um, and you can do that by going to developer options, but yeah, so real quickly, I guess I can show you guys, um, actually, no, I'm going to keep going through this, but there's, uh, anyway, there's apps, system app settings, there's choose default apps, there's AI core, all this stuff's going to show you everything. Let's say I go in here and I want to do everything, notifications, permissions, you can do all this stuff. You can kind of do all this stuff. This is very basic Android stuff. So if you've had an Android phone, that's great. But like I said, so app, you know, all this stuff, as you can kind of see, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about these things, but um, but yeah, you get the point. It does it with every single app. And then you can go in here and see permission manager, special access. You can do special app access if you want to give apps certain access that they might not request on their own. And then, yeah, you can do all of these um, for literally everything. So like all files access, device admin, appear on top, do not disturb permission, uh, manage media, um, change system settings, notification access, picture in picture, use premium text messaging services, apps that can always use data, install unknown apps, alarms and reminders, usage data access, VR helper services, Wi-Fi control, touchscreen on, full screen alerts, everything you might need. Suites, they have that, they have permission manager, let's go in here. You can do, uh, like I showed you earlier, it shows everything like that. So like additional preferences, SMS, physical activity, photos and videos, phone, notifications, nearby devices, music and audio, microphone, sound like a freaking uh, auctioneer guy or whatever. Uh, location, health connect, files, uh, files and media, wish I was faster, but I'm not. Context, camera, call logs, uh, calendar, body sensors, um, don't know why I'm going bottom on the top, but I am. And then it shows the one of the one apps allowed. Sweet. Um, then yeah, we have all of these. I'm not gonna go through and review all that, but you can do that. You can search them and then sweet. Yeah. So you can choose default apps you want to show. Um, I believe, uh, it says, sorry. One sec. Yeah. For making calls. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually. So, so let's say you download like a separate calling app. You can go in and change it. I don't have another one, but it would show another one. Uh, you can do browse. So like Apple recently added this, but Android has always been able to do this. So shout out to Android. You know what I mean? Uh, we've always been able to choose which apps we want. So like, let's say I want either, this is a good example. So there's built-in Samsung messages and they also give Google. If you want RCS by default, 
You can have that. I believe RCS is in Samsung Messages, um, but they've already kind of had something similar already. But this is more Samsung to Samsung, and this is just Google to Google. So I always have, I think this is the better option personally. But if you theme the phone, which I will show you in a second um, after I'm done with the settings, um, you can actually change up, like you know, like I said, you can change the phone themes. It will actually affect in here, um, but it won't change this up. So if you are a big person on themes, things like that, using this is probably the better choice. But if you are sending things to an iPhone, Apple recently allowed RCS, which is nice. So basically, they have killed that ex exclusivity factor, which is nice. Um, and yeah, um, uh, let's see here. It's so funny too. Like when people think of Android, they oh, you're gonna have green bubbles. Like <laughs> this is the perfect example is my wife's friends' responses when my wife got this phone. They're like, you're gonna have green bubbles. I'm not talking to you anymore because <laughs> it's joking. But and the funny thing is. I feel like people would do that in middle school, actually, and that shit is so weird. Um, <laughs> really weird. Uh, yeah, so language, app languages, uh, language packs, date and time, Samsung keyboard settings, keyboard list, and default, physical keyboard, mouse, trackpad, passwords, pass keys, and autofill. Boom, boom, boom. We got all that. So there's management of all this stuff. Da, 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 da. And then, cool. Accessibility, so you can do recommended, so recommended for us, all right, or for me. Uh, so vision enhancements, let's see, because this might be important for some people. So high contrast fonts, you have high contrast keyboards, highlight buttons, uh, relumino outline. I don't know what that is, but. I think it maybe does outline for text. Color inversion, uh, like boom. Color correction, so you can do, if you're colorblind, things like that. Um, Yeah, so, so like let's say I'm this colorblind, like it's just gonna correct the texture which you can see, so things are prioritized in a different way. Um, but yeah, <laughs> can you imagine being grayscale, like not seeing any color, just like, whoa. <laughs> or maybe like grayscale, <laughs> because it's easier on the eyes, I don't know. But either way, um, but yeah, so they, they seem to definitely um, care about people who are colorblind and things like that, man, it's really nice. I think color inversion just looks so so funny, dude. I really like it. So color inversion shortcuts, you can toggle it on or off uh, without having to go in these settings. So that's pretty sweet. So you can do highlight buttons and stuff like that. So boom, boom, okay. Um, yeah, so if you have a hard time kind of seeing details, it'll go around buttons and things like that. It'll make it more clear for you. You can do extra dim or uh, reduce transparency and blur. Um, so you can do... Oh, okay, so it re reduces visual effects, so if that get, kind of gives you a headache for some reason. So magnification, you can do that. This is a shortcut, type. There is a key magnification when uh, when switching apps in full review. Uh, move cursor while typing. Da -da 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 -da. And then we have, I'm going a little bit quicker, guys, because I still have stuff to show, and I want um, to get to all this without having my phone be, or having this video, um, you know, five hours long. Um, <laughs> Which it's it's looking like it's going to be that way, but cursor thickness. So if you have like a cursor on the phone screen, um, pointer size and color, so you can change it to uh, red if you want. Ooh, <laughs> woo! I'm sorry. Uh, it looks like the Windows one. That's kind of cool. Um, then the black one for the Mac one. But anyway, um, yeah. And then we have font size and style, like I had said. Um, and then speaker keyboard. Input allowed. Audio description, Bixby Vision for accessibility, and voice label. Sweet, so that's vision. We have talk back, so the phone will talk to you basically. And we have hearing enhancements, so we can do real time text, live transcribe, live caption, caption preferences, hearing aid support, sound notification, amplify ambient sounds, mute all sounds, mono audio. So, it, you know, there's um, mono and stereo. Mono is going to be kind of. Um, stereo kind of plays more than one sound, so it feels like it's kind of around you, versus mono is just going to be same sound through um, both speakers, so it's just gonna feel more, I guess, condensed. Um, so left and right sound balance. So like, let's say you're hard of hearing, you can go in here and you can actually change them up. So you can do, um, so like, let's say you've connected headsets and you, but you're hard of hearing, so you can change it to where it's prioritized your left ear versus the right ear. It also feel like sounds coming from your good ear and you can balance it really nice. Same with the phone speakers. I think it's really great that they do that for anybody with that's hard of hearing or is deaf and needs kind of something kind of visual. And I think vision enhancements are in there or hearing enhancements. I don't really know how it works. I'm not really uh, too informed in this area, so don't get on me about that. I apologize if I've done anything wrong, yada, yada. Um, assistant menu, voice access, inter, uh, interaction control, touch and hold delay, auto action pointer stops, strict keys, slow keys, bounce keys, boom. Um, so, whoa. Oh, so this is just stuff for like, if you have a keyboard, it's just gonna get its options for that. So advanced settings, Accessibility button, slide um, slide volume 
Um, up buttons, slide and volume up buttons. What's that? Oh, okay. So if I press this, cool, we'll do that. All right, awesome. Um, volume up and down buttons. Oh, okay. So it says <laughs> slide side. Oh yeah, so it's basically like if I press this, it's gonna screenshot or you can change it to whatever you want. So like, let's say, you know, both of you guys share a phone or something or like, you know, your mom uses your phone a lot and she's hard of hearing or something like that. You can you can set these certain settings based on a gesture. So you can just, if your mom needs to use your phone or something, you can just do the gesture real quick and it'll set on the accessibility settings. So I think it's awesome. It allows you really to remap buttons. I think Apple is um, just getting into that with their new button. You can remap on the side. It's not just silent anymore. I think them getting rid of the switch kind of sucks because that switch thing was freaking awesome. But also, uh, screw Apple, never buying from them again. It's probably not true, but um, still. Either way, actually, you know what? Props to them. They're actually doing that voice thing where you can, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, where it'll record your voice if you're losing it. It sounds very robotic and creepy, but the fact that it is there and you can still use your voice is awesome. It'll save your voice if you're losing it. So I think that's awesome. So camera flash notification, screen flash notification, boom. So if I want the, um, if I want this to go off like a flash LED flash, like so back in the day, um, so actually, you know what's cool, man? Um, the This phone that I'm recording with, the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus, the buttons in the top actually light up when there's a notification. They they pulse, they flash when there's a notification. I think it's pretty awesome that you have that. So they have kind of a similar thing. Um, it doesn't do any pulse notification thing, but you can have, I think you can have it on the screen um, in some other settings. But yeah, either way, um, basically it just, if you have a notification, this is gonna let you know as it happens, the flash on the back or the screen will flash and it lets you know. So it's kind of a, a visual way. If you're not auditory or whatever, it'll it'll do a visual light up. And I think it's pretty sweet, man. Um, so time to take action. Um, choose how long to show messages. Oh yeah, yeah, so if like you're slow to getting to the top of notifications or something like that, or you don't really notice it too well, or if you have something with your, you know, something with your hands, maybe it's hard to, you know, your hands are um, malformed or something, or I don't know how to say this, guys. I'm so, I'm so awkward with this, bro. I just feel bad. I don't want to make anybody upset or anything. Um, yeah, especially Lauren. You know, sorry about being rude to her if she's watching the video. I feel bad. Um, it was rude of me to respond so so, so sharply because I love her. Um, yeah, anyway, um, so you can change that up and boom, boom, boom. And then you can do time to take action. Like I said, boom. And then we have... Um, interaction dexterity, system menu voice access, interaction control, touch and hold delay, strict keys, oh, blah, 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 yeah, and then we have advanced settings, accessibility, side volume, blah, 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 sorry, I lose my place a lot, advanced settings, so accessibility buttons, side buttons, um, blah, 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 Installed apps, so live transcribe, get notifications, uh, or sound notifications, and then you see so you're getting notified about that, and then Voice access, awesome. So installed accessibility things will populate in here. And then about accessibility, you can go in here and it's gonna explain everything, the version, all that. So yeah, there are a lot of accessibility settings and Samsung is looking out for you if you are in a situation where you need uh, a little bit more assistance with using this phone. Um, you know, Samsung's got you, sweet. So about the phone and boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna have to fucking cut that out. What is this, 102? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna go into anything else, but basically it's Android 14 uh, and uh, Samsung UI 6.1 and then yeah those are all the settings uh, so the screen looks good let's go into customization you can do here wallpaper style widgets um, thank god they did not end the video um, man hopefully they don't call me again that's really annoying um, Sweet. So yeah, we have all this, uh, you know, you can do, so like, look, it's going to pop. So when you download ones from the app store too, they're going to show up in here, but these are just the default ones because there's nothing else installed, but bat, uh, so battery, right? If I want to do this, I can just add it to the screen. Um, but yeah, either way, um, do that. And then if you want to remove it, you can actually resize it like this. Uh, some apps will, some apps won't, um, just depends. But yeah, you can remove it or you can go to settings with this. It'll go back in here and you can do this thing like where you just kind of, it changes up the transparency. Um, so and I actually think that that looks way better. Um, but yeah, either way, uh, yeah, match with dark mode. Cool. So that's cool. You can actually change up how they look too. That's sweet. I've never actually had that ability. Um, that is actually kick ass. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, so we have the wa uh, the weather and then... Uh, Washington, it'll be clear, blah, 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 blah. Okay, sweet. 
So now we have this wonderful freaking thing. Uh, what do we call it? Um, yeah, so more more of these. You know, you have battery. These are the default ones, like I had said. Um, you can do that. You can go into Bixby Vision. Um, so all that. And then camera. It'll show the camera. Uh, Chrome. You can do Chrome Dino. That's a game that, that's like a game if you're offline, it'll, it'll uh, show that. Um, you can do more in here. Google Maps, all that stuff. Contacts. Show your contacts in different ways. You can add them to the home screen. So you can add like a, you can add, actually this is cool. You can add like a direct call button. So if you want to just direct message somebody or direct dial them or go into a contact directly, you can just have it on the phone. So like, let's say you want to call your friend real fast. You just tap the button and it'll go right into calling them. And I think that that actually is very useful. You can have a multiple direct dial. So you can have the four people uh, in a little widget or more. I think it, it looks like it's just four by one. Yeah. So it's just four people, but you can also add the individual ones, but I think that that's actually really sweet. So advice care, it'll do optimization. So let's say you want to keep your clean, phone clean and everything running really great. It's running kind of sluggish. You can have this one. It's a bigger one. It'll show storage as well. Um, and it'll show memory is RAM. So that's, that's what I was saying earlier with the 12 gigs and all that. But, um, you know, fortunately at 12, this is just a example. Um, but yeah, so in it, this year with ultras, they took away the option for eight gigs, which is a good idea because people were freaking out about that. Rightly so eight gigs now is absurd. And Apple just jumped on that. <laughs> Their OS is, um, in interestingly enough, very light. So they're able to kind of make a phone work well with eight gigs of Ram, but, and Samsung does a pretty decent job with it too, but I think 12 gigs of Ram is a lot nicer personally. Um, so Gmail anyway, gallery, all that Google, um, internet. Uh, the Google ones are just the same Google ones. Uh, sorry, I'll go in them real quick. So meeting, you can do search, you can do, um, this one, finance, watch list. That's actually pretty sick. Glad I showed that. Um, that we have magnifier. We have the maps. We have OneDrive. We have recommended apps. We have weather. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. We have this, this, this. And then we have Yelp. If you have Yelp installed, um, you can see some angry moms complaining about restaurants. Um, and you have some YouTube as well. So nice guys. Boom. We are chilling. Okay. So you got all the widgets. You have the wallpapers. What else do we have right down here? We have settings. You can go into your settings. Uh, it makes it very easy. You can add home screens, uh, things like that. So that is all the basic settings, I believe. Um, I can show you guys camera really quickly. So when we go into the camera, um, I do not have, sorry about not really having a, um, you know, a, a good sort of like place to take photos. Um, but we can go anyway, we can go in here, change it to friggin' 200, uh, which is insane. So if I zoom, it's going to be a smaller size. Um, but if I keep it like this, but 200 megapixels is huge. That's why I think their base should be 512. I'm not going to lie, especially with an option like that, but four by three or 16 by nine, one by one, this is basically how you want the camera to display. So like, for instance, like that. Okay. So let's say a timer when you take it pretty sweet. Sorry, I'll make this a little bit clearer over here. Sweet. So yeah, we have that. And then we have flash. You can turn on or off. You can go into actual settings. So there is the scan QR codes. That's on shot suggestions, scan documents and text. That's so freaking sick, dude. In the camera, you don't have to get any kind of Adobe PDF scanner. That is awesome. Props to Samsung for that, man. That is so helpful. Swipe to shutter button, uh, watermark, advanced picture options. So we can do the picture format and high efficiency pictures. Basically, it'll take a good picture, but it will make it so that it's not as space dominant. Um, it basically just compresses the photo, which I think is pretty sweet. Um, yeah, so we have uh, up and down switch cameras, auto FPS, video stabilization, advanced video options. Let's go in here, HVIC or H264. This is what people use for, uh, this is what I use to export um, videos. Uh, and actually, you'll see that quality, um, this quality setting when I export this video and it's the video you're watching on YouTube right now. Um, but yeah, anyway, so high bitrate videos, boom. HDR10 videos, boom. Um, uh, sweet, yeah, so turn all that on. Zoom mic, 360 audio recording. So it's capture immersive 360. So you need 360 headphones, I think, to feel that. But either way, kind of cool. Uh, grid lines, tracking out of focus, location tags, shooting methods uh, like this. So you can turn on the ones you want or not. Floating shutter button. Okay, cool. So if you're like, can't reach or something, you'll have a floating one where you can press it. Uh, it's probably good for people with small hands. Um, 
Foreshadow, I don't have to really worry about that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so we got all that. And then permissions, so you can see what the camera has access to. And then you can go in and I guess maybe deny it. I don't really know, but cancel for reset settings and about camera. It's going to go into the version because you can update all this stuff in the in the uh, Samsung App Store. And then, yeah, so not available with current picture size. So let's say go back down to 12. If I can go here and I can do uh, filters. So it just changes up like the white balance and ISO and shit like that. So filters, face, cool, all that. And then you have this play motion picture on, motion photo off. I think it's a GIF. Um, or it's like one of those other things. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, so that's basically camera settings. Uh, you can go and change it up. Let's say video. Video is very similar, full HD. Um, if I want up to 8K and then 30, you can do UHD, which is 4K for 60. Um, or is that 2K? I don't... Hmm. Hmm. I think that's... UHD might be 4K. We actually might be getting a 4K display. Um, although I don't really know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yes, yeah, so we have running... A super stick. Whoa, look at that shit on my fucking. Whoa, what the hell, guys? Are you fucking serious? Dude, look at my nail right now. What the shit? Dude, are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh my fucking god. Is this a joke? What the fuck, Samsung? Holy shit, it looks like a toe, dude. What the fuck, dude? Okay, yeah. Shout out to Samsung. Best fucking phone camera I've ever seen, dude. That was awesome. What a fucking pleasant surprise. That is so sick, guys. Holy shit. Yeah, there's more stuff you can do, though. So Expert Raw, Pro, Pro Video, Night, Food, Panorama, Slow Motion, Hyperlapse, Portrait Video, Dual Recording, Single Take, Boom. We got it all. You can do more like this, or you can change, I guess, like, to move the, the modes around. So you drag and drop, and then boom. Um, AR zone, if you want that extra thing, it's, sh it basically allows you to do like drawings and shit. It's kind of fun for kids or whatever. Or if you want to add some extra stuff to your thing, Bixby vision, um, I don't know what that does, but oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. So if you got Bixby vision, let's see here. So translate, you can always, oh, so you can take a picture of shit and it'll translate it. You can do text, um, discover. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this, oh, fuck. Yeah. That's so sick. So it'll it'll show the photo you're in, and then it'll do that. What about wine? Uh, I don't know what wine is, but it, maybe it'll recognize wine types or just, I don't know. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be fancy. Okay. <laughs> oh shit! Wait, I didn't do front facing, guys. I'm so sorry. So let's see here. So we have a color tone for selfies. Uh, also, this kind of goes over, so it might affect it a little bit. I'm not really sure. So neutral or warm. I think neutral is good. Um, we have filters up there. Of course, you have the uh, timing. You have this motion thing. You have the flash. You have the settings. So I go into settings. It's going to be the same thing. Shutter, all that advanced picture options. See if it's any different in there. Nope. Same thing. Um, I don't know if visual stabilization, advanced video options, blah, blah, blah. Grid lines, location tag, shooting methods, all that stuff. Basically, it's all the same stuff that we saw in the other one. Um, kind of expected, but still. I'm going to say take a picture. Or let's say, is it? Let's say it's wider for multiple people. Basically, it's just a wider, wider um, version of the, the thing. Um, let's say, so let's say I go and can I change up the quality? You can change up the camera quality. I think it's going to be the same because there's only one lens, of course. But here, you can change up the settings to uh, UHD 60. So that's pretty freaking impressive, dude. It's a really like wow. It looks hello. Um, as you can see, we got your boy's leather case on your motherfucking. Uh, phone so i am recording with the 9s pro plus uh, if you're wondering about the quality the zoom thing was a little weird in the beginning so that's a little bit of a knock to that but um yeah i gotta take shit one sec boys sorry one sec we're back boys feeling way better holy shit literally oh okay so that's yeah it's camera um phone uh let's just say like yeah everything works um phone settings um, yeah, that's getting cut out. 113, 102, and 113. Okay, sweet. So, boom. Um, yeah, so we got voicemail. You can see visual voicemail, you can call it immediately. Um, you can do that. Speed dial, open it all, visual voicemail. Yeah, it's basically, it's a, I mean, it's a fun up, guys. It's really, uh, you can do the, uh, I guess, like the visual video calls directly from there through Meet, and Meet is awesome. It's a really good service. Um, 
yeah. Also, I don't have any sponsors or anything that, for like these phones. I buy all the phones myself. Um, yeah, so don't. I mean, actually, I have sponsors. I got Caseborn, and I, I um, like they're they're really awesome guys. It's really nice working with them. Uh, yeah. So of course, Caseborn, um, they're freaking dope. And then I have um, the two other ones, I believe. Um, uh, Games Go, which is a streaming service where you can basically, um, if you want actually to do that, you can go to TRTYT. Tech Review Tom YouTube. Uh, you can type that in for a discount, and then yeah, go to gamesgo.com for all those discounts. And then you have, uh, if you are worried about um, you know ensuring safety and security on your uh, kids' phone, um, uh, we have a sponsor for that as well, guys. Uh, I do believe it is uh, Media Tech or something like that. No, that's a case. Anyway, <laughs> sorry guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the thingy. Um, my last video has the ad from. I'm so sorry. Anyway, uh, apologies for my working memory. Definitely, definitely that. But yeah, it shows in here um, all the stuff. So you got like you got all this. Uh, another thing I'll show you guys real quick is the S Pen. The one of the main features of the phone. You pull this beast out right here. Bah. Um, so yeah, it's going to show you all the stuff. So hello. So smart select. Um, so if you just hold and circle, um, yeah, that's cool. S Pen. Oh, so yeah, you can go up here. You can write hello. Um, or I guess you got to hold the button and then air action. So you can take a picture from a distance and then you can do smart select, quickly equip, clip images, text, and more from apps. S Pen detects air actions. Take pictures, play music, and move with your S Pen. Done. There's a lot of cool shit you can do. Um, enjoy your S Pen. All right, cool. So you have here, and you can do a bunch of stuff. So we have Smart Select, Screen Write, and then you add more things, right? So let's do, let's do um, Screen Write. So the screenshots it, and then hello. It's ist your boy. Yeah, if I want that, I can save it. If not, you know, erase it. You know what I mean, guys? You can change up the uh, settings and all that shit. So if I want to do a pencil and change this. This was fun on my note. I'm not going to lie. But it's still cool in the Galaxy because there's no... And, and, like, look. So pressure will make it harder or softer. Sorry, guys. I realize you can't see that. So, like, softer or harder. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I mean, you get to scribble on the screen, all that shit. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool features like that. So, that's the screenwriting one. Let's try the uh, let's try the smart select. Let's see what that does. So, if I want to do this right here, um, screenshot, you can do this. And then you can pin it. Um, so, let's say I pin it here. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, if I need, basically, if, um, do I want to, hmm, how do I get rid of that? Yeah, okay, so that is fucking awesome, dude. Okay. How do I get rid of this? Okay, tap it. Save it. You can make it like a text thingy, or you can uh, delete it. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to get rid of that. Um, okay, cool. Back into here. And then says Smart Select. Then you can add more things. It shows the battery percentage right there, so Bixby Vision. Um, if I want to, this Bixby Vision thing is cool. I can add this. Drag and hold. Drag and... It'll basically magnify text, I guess. That's pretty cool. And then Translate. Then all apps. You can put a bunch of apps in there, but I think that's just what's going to pull from the side. I think Google Lens is probably something I want to do. Do I have Lens? I don't. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Bixby Vision is probably the equivalent of Google Lens. Um, let's say Bixby Vision. So if I want to do this, let's say I want to take a picture of uh, this. So you go here, and then. Got it, and then we can do. Oh yeah, but hang on. Let's 
to see. So let's go to Reddit. Uh, Reddit, sweet. So let's say I want to um, find something here. I can do this. So the button. Also, they made this gray to align with the color of the phone, which I thought was badass. So I don't know what we're doing here, like what exactly this vision shit's supposed to do, to be honest. Okay, so you select something, and then you can put text. Oh, okay, you can copy or translate the text. So yeah, you can download Spanish. So let's say I want... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically you can real time translate something with this. So that's pretty sweet. So you can, yeah, you can select an area, real time translate it. I think you can do it with photos as well. Um, or you can, you can, uh, oh, fuck yeah. Whoa, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. Okay. So watch, go here and then Bixby Vision and then we tap something. And then, uh, without going to the link, how about, how about, uh, with this thing? Where's the button? I don't know how well it works on websites, I guess, but. Highlight stuff. Cool. Sorry I'm not really doing this Bixby Vision thing right, guys. Um, my bad on that. I'm still kind of learning it. Um, I wish I had known like how to do this, guys. My bad. Literally, my bad. This is why is this so confusing? It shouldn't be this confusing. So you tap and then you pull back and then you can select. Up. Yeah, I, I, what the fuck? Anyway, this, and then, yeah, I, this is so confusing. I think it's, this has got to be a me problem here. So, sorry about that, guys. But you basically saw what it does once. Um, I'm sure it's a lot easier when you're not um, a genius like me. Um, okay, magnify, so you can, you can, uh, oh, fuck yeah, that's cool. Dude, baller. Okay, yeah, yeah, so basically magnifying glass, you can't really see, it's too far away, even if up close you can magnify it, so that's really useful. And then I think to get rid of it, you just change up the uh, thing you're doing. They can save it, and I don't know how to get out of this. Did I type it again? Yeah, okay, so you just, oh, what the fuck? Oh, duh. There's a thing up top, so you can go here. You can change up the magnification to 300. Dude, what the fuck? That's crazy. And then you can make it bigger or smaller, and then you can exit. Sorry about that, guys. Um, you guys might need a magnifier on that because of how great I did with that. Um, <laughs> okay, sweet. So... Yeah, awesome. Um, what else does the S Pen do? So we did this, then this one, this one, uh, this one, and then you can translate stuff. So I like this personally. You can do Spanish 
cool target language English or other way around actually rotate yeah so English to Spanish like let's say we'll do that again um, or here I think I just like this oh yeah, yeah okay you just hover it and then Boom, yeah, 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 so that's pretty sick. Um, I, I think that's really cool, this translate thing's awesome. Another thing you can do is you can just do this. You can screenshot, um, this one's actually easier to do without the S Pen, but um, go in here, so let's say view it, and then we can do um, uh, edit. Um, we can do, actually, can I, do I do it in edit or no? Oh yeah, yeah, so you go in here and you just select the text actually in the photo, um, I believe, and then translate. Yeah, so it'll just do all the stuff. Yeah, so that's that's pretty sweet. Um, and then what else? Yeah, there's more there's more features. Um, I don't have PenUp installed, but PenUp is pretty sweet. If you ever want to get PenUp, it basically allows you to like take notes and draw and shit like that. So I think that's really cool. Um, and then let's do the photo distance thing I really like. Uh, there's a lot of photo commands, so watch. Ready? You can just do this one, take a picture. Yeah, actually, so right here. Single press for photo. Um, yeah, so you can switch cameras by this. It's like a magic wand, bro. Your boy. Change in. Close out of it? What the fuck? Anywho, um, so I don't know all the gestures, but if I do a circle, what does that do? Oh, so it changes camera modes. So basically, if you're far away, you have a ability to let's see if it works over here. Sick. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of features like that, but um, I'm sure that if they missed some kind of pen feature, sorry about that, but this is, for the most part, the things that I remember from the S Pen that I really enjoyed and used. I have some family members that are um, Spanish speaking only, so um, yeah, so I just, uh, I am able to use Translate, or at least like, uh, for instance, my mother-in-law had post, uh, mi suegra, <laughs> I don't know, I'm being crazy trying to speak, mi suegra. Um, my mother-in-law, um, she is, uh, posts some Facebook statuses in just Spanish. So I was able to, on the S23 Ultra, when I had this, I was able to just screenshot it and copy and translate and translate exactly what she was saying. It's very, very easy. Um, something that is awesome, like, like, cause I had to download an extra photo translate app on the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. Uh, with this, yeah, no worries there, which is really freaking awesome, dude, honestly. So um, let's see here. So we got that. We got Google, OneDrive, Samsung, Assistant, Camera, Contacts, Gallery, Internet, Messages, Phone, Play Store, Settings, Store, Smart Switch, Files, Yelp, um, and then Lawrence Games. Oh man, that's, that's basically just all the stuff here. And then I, uh, I'm going to get out of maintenance mode real quick just to, um, show you guys like a game or something. Um, or at least here, we'll, we'll do this. Um, maintenance mode. Okay, boom. Um, yeah, it's like, it's kind of cool. You can't get out of it without a password. So that's pretty sick. Um, good job for Samsung doing that. Cause like, I, I wonder how many, like, bozos just steal info and steal shit from people that just, like, don't understand. And, like, it just, there's got to be, I mean, I'm sure not, I'm sure everyone isn't, um, like that.
I'm just I'm just making sure that everything um, is good to go. And there's no surprise notifications and stuff like that. So here, one sec. Oof, my stomach sounds good. <laughs> Ew. Um, Ew. Here, um, I'm gonna open up some COD Mobile um, on this phone. Uh, there isn't like HD graphics and stuff installed, so you guys will actually be able to see like the live process of install, so you can kind of see download speeds and stuff like that. So I think this might be a good way to display that. Um, we just do, uh, guest is annoying, bro. But yeah, here, we'll, cause you gotta do the tutorial. Just, I mean, it's, yeah, it's really annoying. But here, we'll just turn the volume up. She does have Adobe Atmos installed, so it's, So, okay, so the game looks good. Um, no gripes there. Um, phone already is kind of weirdly feeling hot. That's immediately, it's weird. Just on one side. That is kind of strange, I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is kind of becoming a, a graphically demanding game, or there's a lot of shit in it. So that's, that's one thing. Yeah, so we'll see some HD resources downloading, boy. Let's see, let's see the speed. So, of course, internet connection is one thing. <sighs> um, and my internet connection is really average. So, yeah. It's kind of fast, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, sound, feel, it sounds good. It feels like it's like, when I put it near my face, it feels... Feels like this it fires this way, this one that way, and I think that's really kind of. But I mean, yeah, it's good. It's really good. It's good sound. It sounds full and high quality and all that stuff. So um, we're gonna go to. I'm gonna sign in my Facebook thing real quick. So I have to do this tutorial or whatever. But um, yeah, actually, one second. Let me pause this. Sorry, guys. I literally forgot to hit play. But um, but yeah, we're we're moving. Just trying to get through that tutorial. You know what I'm saying? Um, Advanced mode, sweet. TLQ's baller. Nice, nice boy. Yeah, um, cool. Boom. <laughs> Take your time, wife. Boy? No, she didn't. That was me who put that. <laughs> There's no way she put that as her name. Here, let me see if this has 120 for, um. Oh, man. Right, yeah, it looks like. Or I guess next time it's gonna do that, but. Yeah, with this first game, man, they got easy bots for sure. Enemy in sight. Enemy contact. Is that you, bud? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Enemy 
I just, I literally thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye, like I, someone bend their head towards me, like I was, it's kind of freaky. It was you? Oh, I was like, dude. Yeah, so we got a like a, a game going, pretty sweet. Um, sorry, let me just get all this crap out of the way. Here, um, and then yeah, let me let me go to YouTube real fast, and then we'll we'll close it off because I can get it'll be like a good um, visual demonstration of just like the quality because it's it's a pretty solid display. I think that it does a really good job, especially with. Um, so I did a nature thing here. I guess there's no sound on this. Uh, I'm gonna do, sorry guys, I'm gonna do a nature demonstration real quick. Cool, yeah, yeah, nature sounds, boys. This is a good metric, I guess, to use for, uh, for this. Uber half! <laughs> Uber half! Damn it, it's a BBC thing? <laughs> heh. <laughs> I don't want a virtual rainforest, I want real. There we go, this is what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for, boys. Goodness, dude. Nice, this is exa this is it, we're not. You know all the BBC, BBC, mama.
whatever it was. But yeah, um, I mean, that's really it. Like, you know, it's a good phone all around. Looks nice. The two-tone looks fantastic. Feels really good in the hand. Really solid, really good materials. Everything is very in order and solid and together. And this is a very nice phone. Um, like, it really is, guys. Like, you're you're uh, really getting a good experience with this phone. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching my full review of the Samsung Galaxy S23. 24 now. 24 Ultra. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks so much. Bye.